I'm here today with my great friend, Ernest Scalamandre. Uh, and um, Ernie, you've been in the finance space for uh, a long time. But before we talk about your career, I'd love to talk about what it was like for you growing up. My family was in the silk business. Um, mm -hmm. And I elected not to go into that sort of thing. And I, so I started in my summers in, in high school and college, essentially down the floor of the stock exchange. You know, and some endeavors in that nature, and frankly, stayed in the business ever since. Back then, Wall Street was um, dominated by these partnerships, of which many of which don't exist anymore. I think Brown Brothers might be the only last remaining one. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to go to work for one of those groups, and got a job off from Peter Peabody, and left college, and you know, on a, on a set Friday, and started on Monday. Take us from your days from Kidder to where you are today, running your own firm. Well, I was a little bit disillusioned with the whole Wall Street partnership being like the low man on the totem pole, to be frank with you. And, I, you know, I thought I'd made some money for the company, and there's a big disconnect between what you got paid and, um, you know, I, bet, I guess based upon your seniority at the time. This is in the mid-'80s now. Mm -hmm. Basically, I went down to the floor of the stock exchange and traded my own account, essentially to, you know, for the next 10 or 12, 14 years or something. And so I left and essentially... Had two two jobs for a year or two, and ultimately just started my own company. That was Pinnacle Asset Management in two thousand, I think, or two thousand one. Okay. Um, essentially, a niche fund of funds, essentially, you know, uh, business. And I was small, so myself sitting in an office, and um, but that was fairly successful to the extent that um, I got re-energized to commodities because had it traded commodities back in the you know better part of the 80s and good chunk of the 90s and I was always sort of waiting for when commodities were going to sort of come back as an asset class or sort of an investable universe and a couple of things happened um, you know a couple of the big companies uh, went under and most notably Enron so you had a sort of a, a uh, vacuum of um, of, uh, <clears throat> of speculative balance sheets mm -hmm. and then secondly you had the advent of China and India of which frankly was a game changer from a consumption standpoint. So by the middle of that decade, 2005-ish, um, you had know, $2-$3 billion you know, in the funds at that point. Mm -hmm. And uh, you probably remember, you likely were participating. Yeah. Um, I left, um, you know, not very, you know, with not happy about the culture that I, I started, not happy about the environment, the work environment, certainly wasn't very productive from my perspective. Mm -hmm. So. I wrote a small business plan. This is a start of 2006, I guess, and uh, of which how my next three, five, ten, and twenty years would I would like to see happen, as far as the firm as well as the culture. And um, sure enough, you know, uh, sort of oddly, if you will, you know, this is I'm seven years into it, mm -hmm. and we were sort of adhering to sort of like the middle of our business plan, and um, you know, I guess it. Uh, it only came after a couple of times of doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one ever told me, uh, you know, which way to go in life. But um, after I sort of found out um, specifically what I thought my skill sets were and what my skill sets aren't, right. which are many, <laughs> um, you know, what environment would my sort of personality, if you will, be successful in? And that's sort of what I tried to design when I started this company. I got you. So, and what about the, the commodity space? I mean, most of the people that I interview are sort of long, short equity managers or right. private equity folks. But the commodity space, you know, I think of trading places, honestly, when I mm -hmm. think of uh, uh, the commodity sector. Um, what areas do you focus on? A, cu a couple things happened last decade of significance to commodities, at least. You know, in institutional investors on a fairly wide scale started embracing commodities as an asset class. It was a game changer to the extent from commodity pricing because um, there's no natural participant to their investment. Mm -hmm. I.e., when you go and buy a, a stock, you the, the the opposite side of the stock, your stock investment is actually the company which issues the shares. In commodities, there's only there's two participants. Are generally the producer in the case of say corn, it's the farmer, and the, the consumption which is either the ethanol or the, the feedstock you know, operator. So there's two participants of which naturally, um, or commercial participants of which naturally determine ultimately what the price is. What happened in commodities is it became an asset class all of a sudden, so you had all this rush of investors pile in. 
to go ahead just buy the price. They never, they don't need the product. So it's, it created this sort of, you know, bifurcation of participants, which I think will ultimately um, provide some opportunities for what we do is essentially trade them both long and short and try to find, you know, pricing and anomalies. And so that's essentially what we do today. When you're looking to hire somebody today and with all your experiences of mistakes in the past yep. and what have you, what do you look for in a candidate? Some personalities, I think, lend themselves very well to a big corporate culture like Citigroup or something. Yeah. And there's a certain sort of skill set that that entails and mandates. And frankly, in this environment, which is a small company, which is very entrepreneurial, and, you know, it, frankly, it's a completely separate skill set. And it requires self-starters, people that, you know, there's a lot of transparency. You really can't sort of hide behind anything. And so, personally, I think the, the biggest hurdle for anyone looking for something to do is to identify yourself as to what position or what sort of environment you'd be successful in. Mm -hmm. And and then from there, if you can somehow narrowly define that to some extent, what you really have a passion about. Because if you don't have a passion for something, I can assure you it's a recipe for disaster. Right. Not a disaster, but it's um, you're, you'll be swimming up upstream. Okay. So, it's, so it's something you really have a passion for and then the right fit with respect to your own personality. I'm here today with Ernest Scalamandre, the CEO of Aurelian uh, Capital Management. Ernesto, can't thank you enough. It's good, good to see you.